Greetings, M squared here. We're going to graph some quadratic equations. We're also going to find the domain and the range of these two equations. So the first thing is when you start to graph, you always want to find the vertex first. It's a really important piece of the puzzle because if we're graphing by hand, we want to make a t-chart and we want to graph the points that we find. But the middle point should always be your vertex so you can see that symmetry that happens and know that you have the correct graph. So to find the axis of symmetry, I mean to find the vertex, we first find the axis of symmetry because it's that x-coordinate of the vertex. So you might remember that the axis, axis of symmetry equation is x equals negative b over 2a. So I'm going to do that first. Remember, a is the thing in front of x, the coefficient, the number in front of the x squared. b is the number in front of the x term, which is missing in this one. And c is the constant. So negative b over 2a. I'm sorry, 2a. So 0 divided by 4 is 0. So now I know that I start with x in the middle. And when I, that's how I figure out what my middle point is. And then I go a few points behind, and if, oh, I'm sorry, and a few points, to, to a few points to the left and a few points to the right. And we might need to do another point as well. We'll see how the graph looks. So then we start plugging numbers in. If I plug a zero in right here for x, and I want to see what y is. So zero times two is zero, plus one is one. If I put a one in here, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So when I put a 1 in f of 1, I get 2 plus 1, which is 3. And actually, if I put a negative 1 in, I get the same thing. Because if I, it, um, the x squared, a negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Let me write it out for you, because some people try to multiply first. Remember, for order of operations says you should always do exponents first. So the negative 1 has to be squared first, then times the 2, which is a positive 2 plus 1. So I also get a 3 here. That's what I was talking about with the symmetry. This is my vertex, and I see the same thing on both sides. As long as you don't have fractional increments, that works. Sometimes you, um, when it gets more complicated, it might not be exactly symmetric. But for right now, it will be. So if I put a 2 in, f of 2, which is going to be the same as f of negative 2 because there's no x part here. So 2 squared is 4. And 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 plus 1 is 9. And if I put a negative 2 in there, I get the same thing. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So now I can graph my points. So I go over 2 and up 9, over 1 and up 3, over 0, <laughs> not go anywhere, and up 1, and then over 1, up 3, and over to the left, negative 2, and up 9, and then I can connect the dots. And it's at this point that I like to find my range and domain after I graph it. It's a little bit easier. First of all, domain is only affected by square roots or by x's in the denominators. So I don't have any of those things. So all parabolas have a domain of all real numbers. So if you remember that, that part will be easy. The domain is all real numbers. That's the, Remember, domain means what my x values can be. There's no x that is um, impossible to find a y for. Any x I put in there, I can find a y. So my domain is all real numbers. The range stands for what the values of y are. And you'll notice that this is the lowest point on my graph. There's no y's down here. x, the left and right, this parabola goes left and right forever, but it only starts here and goes up forever. So we got to find that point, which is our minimum. And the range is always, you go to the vertex and you use that y. So since I'm going up, I would say my range is y is greater than or equal to 1, because it's the vertex has a y of 1. Okay, let's try this one. Again, my t-chart, I want to make sure I get my vertex right in the middle. So I do negative b over 2 times a. In this case, we get a negative 3. So I am going to put negative 3 right here, and then I'm going to do a couple points to the left, a couple points to the right, and we're going to put those x values into our function and find out the y values. So let's start with the vertex that kind of gives us a starting point. Negative 3 in there, so negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 minus 3. That's 9. 
6 times negative 3 is 18, minus 3. Negative, uh, 9 minus 18 is negative 9, and negative 9 minus 3 is negative 12. So here I have a negative 12. If I put a negative 2 in, negative 2 squared is 4. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12, minus 3. So 4 minus 12 is negative 8, minus 3 is negative 11. And if I put negative 4 in, remember I'm talking about that symmetry, that's why we do it like this, we put the vertex in the middle and pick points before and after, I should get a negative 11 for the negative 4 as well. So when I put that negative 4 back in, whoops, that one, that's 16 minus 24 minus 3. Well 16 minus 24 is negative 8, minus 3 is 9, 10, 11 is negative 11. So that's how you can know if you're right, if you're getting those same points on either side of the vertex. So I should get the same thing for the 1 and the 5. So when I put a negative 1 in, I get negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 6 when I get 6 times negative 1, minus 3. So that's negative 5, and that's negative 8. If I put the negative 5 in, I should get the same thing. I should get a negative 8. So negative 5 squared is 25, plus a negative 30, minus 3. 5 minus 30 is negative 5, minus 3 is negative 8. So notice that my graph only goes 10 out and 10 up, and I got a negative 12. So the couple ways you can do this, you could like add a couple more down here, or what you can do is you can count by twos. But if you count by twos, you need to write that on the graph, that you're counting by twos. And I write one on the y-axis and one on the x-axis so that I know I'm, they know I'm counting by twos both directions. And I like, to, I like to, if I can, count the same in both directions to keep my um, parabola still the same shape, just a little bit smaller. So now I'm going to graph negative 3, negative 12. So 2, 3, there's my 3. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There's my vertex point. And then if I graph negative 2, negative 11, that's negative 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Oh, sorry, it's 11. Excuse that little point, that's not there. And then if I graphed um, negative 4, 11, I would have gone over 4 and down 11. And then negative 1, negative 8, so 2, 4, 6, 8. And then over here, the same. Um, 2, 4, 5, and then the 8. And so you see how it's kind of really tiny here? Looks like I could have probably graphed another one. So I would drop down and put another point in. 0. If I put 0 in there, I get a negative 3. So I would go down negative 3 on my graph and know that over here I'm going to get the same thing because of that symmetry. And you'll have to ask your teacher, you know, how much they want you to graph, but that would be good enough for me. So that's how you graph that, but we need to find the domain and range. So remember, domain is all real numbers for all parabolas. Well, the up, the up and down ones, not the sideways ones. Up, all real numbers. And the range, you have to look at your vertex. So the lowest point on the vertex for y is negative 12, and it's going up, it's a minimum. So I know that y has to be greater than or equal to negative 12. So my range is y is greater than or equal to negative 12, and my domain is all real numbers. Good luck, m squared, sign it out.